Guys, this is a planning and strategy video and this is mainly for the fresh graduates who are going to target the exam freshly. I will make a separate video in future for you know people who are you know attempting it for the next time or, or people who have you know restarted their preparation after a gap. But now this video is completely towards the fresh students who are you know just recently graduated. The whole sequence first I will tell you the planning and the strategy that you have to follow. Then I'll explain you the program at Arise also that what we do and then I'll take up all your Q&As towards the end of the discussion. So we'll keep it very crisp and also you know very high yield towards your you know so that I can interact with you more and understand your queries more. So let's get started. So now it's you know it's important to plan. So if you fail to plan right you plan to fail. So it's very important that before you start your preparation you have a right mindset you have a positive frame of mind, you have a clear cut idea that how you're going to plan this and execute this thing. So having that clarity is important and having trained students over the years now, both in their universities abroad and, you know, having them at our places, at our centers in India, we have seen how students actually, you know, go through this process and I hope our advice will be useful for your preparation and planning your preparation strategy. So. Now, so you can, you know, put in your ideas, your thoughts towards the end once I, you know, explain you the entire process that we go through. So, to begin with, so it's important that you sit down and take this exam very seriously. So, cannot go with, go on with it very casually. So it is important to understand the task ahead. What is the task that you have ahead? So, it, from a distance, this mountain will look small to you. You will feel that okay, there are six months ahead, December ki baat ho rahi hai, so we have a lot of time and all. But as you come closer, you will see that the mountain is big enough. So, unless you plan early, so very, very important is start early. Start early. If you really want to break this down and do it in a more smooth fashion, it is important that you start early. To achieve this target, to overcome this task, it is important that you remain disciplined in this process, consistent in this process. So there will be a lot of ups and downs that will be coming out, a lot of stress, 19 subjects, exam stress will be there on your head. So okay, there will be a lot of, uh, you know, you will be not working, you will not be, you know, relaxed, there will be consistent, uh, you know, exam stress that will be going on, subject after subject, right from anatomy till radiology, major subjects, short subjects. So it's very, very important that you have a positive frame of mind throughout your preparation. Never get into, you know, negative pressures, have a positive frame of mind, things will work well. Only if you have a hope, right, so that you will pass this exam, you will be able to give your best. So, positive frame of mind is important through this. And uh, out of all of this, it is one most important thing that I want you to remember in the beginning is before you start your preparation, it is important to sacrifice few things. So, you have to sacrifice few things to take up this intense task of preparation of your 19 subjects in six months. So, please understand. 19 subjects we have and uh, six months we don't actually have six months if you look, look at your preparation strategy i'll explain about that but even if you consider six months time it is a too less of a time to be casual or to be lazy so you have to sacrifice some comforts you have to sacrifice some sleep you have to sacrifice some emotions also very important that you don't carry on a lot of negativity with you, a lot of heartbreaks, a lot of financial, psychological, emotional, uh, you know, things. You should become emotionless, bland, emotionally flat. You are going on a mission. You have to have that sharp focus towards your mission. So I hope you understand that, you know, you be completely uh, focused in, in your preparation and with a, with a very, very positive frame of mind, guys. No, no time for laziness, no time to be weak. It is time to get onto your, you know, to pull up your socks, go for the mission now. And uh, you need to fight your emotions out. Please remember, at the same time, I don't want you to be fearful also. A lot of students, I feel, they don't start because of the fear of it, because of the anxiety of, you know, starting the preparation, facing this exam. They want to look for, you know, easy ways out, want to escape this pressure. Please be fearless. Please remember why you are doing this. You're doing this to achieve your dreams, your, your parents' dreams, your family's dreams of seeing you as a doctor. So you started this journey after 12th, right? So your parents saw this dream, your family saw this dream, you saw this dream and went through and went through this whole process of six years there in different countries, overcoming such, such harsh situations, right? Cold, food, language, every barrier you crossed. 
so that you know you come down and have the title of a doctor in front of you and this is the time to be extremely close to your dreams extremely you know rigid on achieving this right you know this change is going to be a huge change since you come after graduating so this uh, change is going to be a drastically important change and once you clear the exam you go become a doctor you achieve this your family's dream you start to earn something right you have a license with you you start working you start to be able to provide to people to take care of people remember all of you you're doing this to feel actually you know importance also you feel important in your society in your families in your relatives right so this is something also a good motivation to have you start becoming you know remembered for who you are and this fight is important and during this fight it is important to remain fearless be strong right don't get uh, worried anxious nervous right so be yourself be calm do this with a smiling face right you can still go through this process in a very very smiling and happy approach so i hope you stay very very strong throughout this and this is how you know i see freshers coming into you know all this classes and stuff when they begin their classes this is how they are fresh okay bubbly cheerful and nice and happy to see many of this and then you'll you'll realize it once you are going into your classes also when you see your seniors your juniors classmates right so when you see all of them in the beginning phase right so they'll be all this bubbly and cheerful but as they start going to the preparation from this stage to this stage and last month before exam right so just one month before exam this is the state of affairs that will be there and if you really don't want to get into that kind of stress it is important that you plan early okay so you start early you know that thing that uh, how you have to execute this you plan you go according to your plan revisit your uh, plans whether they are following the right track or like right direction track your preparation and see that you don't get too nervous too worried close to your exam so you will see this changes happening in lot of your classmates and stuff close to your in in november you know where you will remember me when you see your classmates and stuff because of the exam pressure so it is an intense preparation phase and uh, i want you to accept this and you know go through this with a smile with a very positive frame of mind and uh, very important to shed off these baggages these emotional baggages baggages of you know getting uh, you know having some anger that i didn't want to do this i am forced to do this blame game right you know and my teachers were not good there my my class my training was not well uh, regret that i should have studied before i didn't study from first year leave all of that start fresh right and never you know try to be too perfect also i will study from grace anatomy i will start my preparation okay my parents said you can have time i will start my preparation from grace anatomy nothing is you know you don't have to do like that you have to shed off all of these baggages and then only you will be able to run you will be able to achieve your goals so it's very very important that you remove all your emotional baggages emotional psychological financial right let it be have some financial stress okay it's okay to be broke at this time but through all of these baggages you are going on a mission stay committed to the cause stay you know become emotionally bland nothing should affect you no happiness no sadness completely bland on focused on to your mission and i hope you know you'll be able to carry that much much more uh, more easily if you don't have these emotional baggages the exam pressure will be much better to handle but if you get affected by what people say what happens in your you know in your family relatives some friend is saying something some friend has studied well before he is answering well in the class if you carry all of these things around you you will not be able to perform to the best of your ability so i want you to you know remove all these emotional baggages and focus on to your goal and on to your missions and now comes sir fine we have to we understand the seriousness of this exam now how do you go about this there are two options both are equally good equally effective online classes or offline classes right you know you have today's world okay you cannot uh, have a choice okay that okay no online is not good offline only is good or offline is good online is good both are equal and both will coexist and both will you know supplement each other so you have to decide what works well for you in an online class you have to be very very self motivated so here it is very important because we don't know whether you are sleeping in the bed and you know you are studying on the table or sleeping in the bed you have to be strongly self motivated so that you study on the study table not on the bed you are studying on the bed that means you are not suitable for uh, online preparation you have to come to an offline center you have to be extremely important that you make a study space where you have your table your chair there you are religiously following that schedule right be very very motivated self disciplined and follow a, a rigid schedule guys okay 
and uh, very important that when you are using online resources and all you use a particular uh, laptop or a application or a mobile phone which does not have other notifications coming on to it or mute all the notifications of all your instagram snapchats or uninstall only you don't need in this six months of battle when you are having to make license of your degree make your degree worth of it if you are carrying all the social media with you it is it is you know that means you are not serious about this it's as simple as that if you are not serious you will have all of the you know things with you and sir some students come and say sir you know lot of information i get on social media i learn the mcq discussion is happening no topper ever or nobody who has passed the exam has ever passed by doing mcqs on whatsapp by doing this uh, you know fake uh, polls and stuff so be be clear on your agenda this is an intense phase you cannot go casually on this six months doesn't matter all your friends can wait all your relatives can wait all your functions family can wait it is first you need to you know recognize yourself it is your very utmost battle for you and for your family so i feel it is important that you uninstall all other applications except the exam ones mute all the notifications of all other you know apps just keep for your own only the ones where you get uh, pdfs of the exams or the the institute that you have joined or the online course that you have joined only their pdfs their class timings their schedule only should be there and you know you try to be as away from the social media space at least for the 6 months time throw your phones as far as possible that is the first and important advice keep your phones away from your study space and in online you have to be careful that when you're using it all the other things keep a separate phone for your studies okay so that is an ideal thing if you can uh, have a separate phone that is the best thing keep your phone very very minimal use very minimal use or have a time slot that only during this time i'm going to watch i'm going to be on my personal mobile personal space and personal stuff if you are really so addicted and cannot let go or you're so important to you know have all the connections done at least have a time a time slot just a half an hour not more than half an hour at this point of time and this six months time and time is such a big issue you should not have all that things you know carried through it after six months do a complete thing do strategies do you know get into social media be visible but not this six months and offline yes they have their own advantages your teacher is with you your faculty members are with you you are away from your uh, so obviously your mobile and you cannot use it as frequently you are not sitting on the bed or not sleeping on the bed and listening to classes you are motivated with the teacher to complete it and the long schedule of classes also right you know it, it's a time bound thing it's a very time bound thing so you will actually finish the course with the faculty within the limited time of frame that we have and you know there is an unnecessary uh, i feel it is not a real uh, worry that what will happen in online these teachers are there offline other teachers will be there please understand uh, we are not into iit or we are not into some neat ug or uh, je preparation this is medical preparation and only very few elite medical faculties are available who actually teach you both offline at different institutes by different names and stuff and also on online actually these are people who have you know established their name in offline and then gone into online so having that pressure that somebody else is going to come and teach in the offline somebody else is going to come and teach on the online is is an imaginary pressure the same set of faculties are there who actually teach you and all good institutes will not try to you know have some random people coming and teaching so most of the institutes unless some you know very really uh, shady institutes but most institutes i feel the content wise you can be assured it is more important how it is delivered how the discipline is there how the ecosystem is there how comfortable you are in that space and all of you can supplement yourself with additional uh, online resources and stuff but having that uh, you know online offline presence with the teachers is also useful for some people especially when you are not dedicated or we are not finding that motivation or you not very disciplined at home seeing your families and stuff you can always choose that both have equal advantages and need not worry that the faculty team of you know medical training is a very very limited faculty group who actually cover both the spaces both offline and online we have lot of faculties right who are also seen on the online platforms and who come down and take actually the entire program right right from the first uh, subject to the last subject everybody is you know visible and uh, those same people actually train you there so you can choose according to your comfort levels and having a ecosystem having a strong team because this is a qualifying exam guys end of the day this is not a competitive exam you can all be supportive to each other motivate each other have a right people when in your group who are studying with you who are focused with you right in your libraries in your study time it's a good i have seen people passing out in groups and you know uh, failing in groups the group you are in will decide what what kind of course or trajectory that you will follow 
So very important that you choose a right group of people, stay focused with your preparation, avoid unnecessary discussions, avoid positive, avoid you know any kind of negativity around. It is not about getting 250 right or 200 right. Okay, if all of you can get 150, that is well and good. So, so let somebody get 250. If he's answering well, it doesn't matter. Be happy with him, take him along, learn from him. You teach some things. Keep a very, very vibrant group among yourself and only a limited and academic group that will help you focus, okay, especially in, when you're in your libraries, when you're in your, you know, a close group, you can actually use that thing for your advantage. Now, coming to the uh, timeline. So, I hope all of you can hear me properly, right? So, let me just explain you the timeline that we are in. So, it's uh, important first understanding that uh, we are not having a lot of time now. So, in this time frame, your last month, you want to keep for revisions and grand test. You cannot keep on studying, listening to classes or attending classes. You are different from your neat PG students, neat PG preparation. They get one full year to prepare. You get four months to prepare. So don't run behind, you know, extra knowledge, extra stuff, extra, okay, I'll study this rare topic. I'll study from there. I'll study from this. Get your exam done. Sit and prepare for neat PG thoroughly. But first now, focus should be on finishing the FMG exam. So don't go in, don't go behind running, you know, a lot of rare things, lot of, you know, details and stuff. It is not required. It is easy to clear the exam. If you are, you know, really strategizing it, not doing mistakes in your preparation, I think it is pretty much a doable thing. So four months, 19 subjects. So if I look into the number of days, we have 120 days, right? So four months is around 120 days and 19 subjects so i feel around each subject you'll get around 6 to 7 days somewhere in between 6 to 7 days per subject right per subject so even if you start full fledged so you cannot have this timeline lost you can make small changes maybe you want to give 10 days for a major subject and maybe 3 days for a short subject that is all okay but you cannot miss out on this time frame so understanding your timeline is important that you cannot go beyond any particular subject beyond uh, you know a particular time length. So you cannot do medicine for one month, you cannot do surgery for one month and expect to have a good exam. You have to finish in the timeline, that dedication is important, that clarity is important to go ahead with. And um, this should be followed with repeated spaced repetition. So please remember whenever you are studying first time, whenever you are studying for the first time, do it once, do it well, do it once, do it best. So do it in detail, do it in complete, you know, with full heart, try to understand the subject, try to, you know, understand the concepts that the faculties are teaching you, make down your handwritten notes, write all the MCQs that you solve, try to put it back into your notes, try to have some extra pages at the end where you add all the new information that you collect by doing MCQs from various resources and stuff and see that you have one final notes. This is the one that will decide whether you will clear the exam or not, how the notes you have formed what quality of your notes are there and how good you are at the revising the notes. So first your notes should be from the faculty classes, then you do your MCQs from different resources, anything you feel is good, something you have missed out in the class, you add into your notes and once you are done that, you keep revising your notes repeatedly. Spaced repeated revisions, spaced repeated revisions. So you do the course completely one time have a subject wise exam done, then space repetitions. This will help you re recollect the uh, topics much easier in your day of exam. So this is very, very important to have understanding of the timeline. So six to seven days per subject and each time you will have, when you are finishing one subject, you should have time for subject wise exam. So when you're doing that also, when you're doing your classes also, please remember when you're doing your schedule or when you're planning your classes also, see that after you finish your class, class, after you finish your class, you spend at least 70% of the time on concept building, revising your notes, right, and learning the theory and attend your classes with a lot of attention. If you want to buy time, if you want to save time, right, so your, how you spend your time during the classes is important. When you are attending the classes, you are attending for a long time, 6 hours, 8 class, whether you are watching online, whether you are watching offline, right, it will not work with 1 or 2 hours classes, right, so you have to because for 4 months, you have to finish 19 subjects. So you have to get adapted to, you know, listening to long hours in the classroom, writing with the faculties or, you know, in the online material also. Go for, for long lengthy classes and finish off the syllabus at one go. And 70% of the time you should go on concept building and 30% 
you will do for your MCQ time. So this should include, this concept building and should include your classroom where you are attentive as well as your self-study. And do make time for your MCQ exam. Lot of the time, the questions are very, very predictable. So many of the questions are pretty much doable, pretty much asked before and stuff. Epidural hematoma, epidural hematoma will come. Pneumothorax, pneumothorax will come. So you cannot miss out on such standard questions, such standard images and all. So MCQ practice will always help. And having a good concept building will help you solve integrated questions, the new pattern questions that come out. So at that balance, especially when you're a fresher, your concepts should be strong to understand the MCQs, to understand the depth. Otherwise, you know, you will have a very factual uh, memory. So it's important that you do this concept building and then go for a MCQ practice. And uh, if you divide your time, imagine 24 hours time if you're dividing. If you're 24 hours, if you divide, you will have maybe about 14 hours where you can go for your um, study time, right? If you can have all the time for study, listening to classes will take around 6 to 8 hours depending on which classes and how much you're doing. But please, that much is needed. If you're really serious about that, 6 to 8 hours of classes per day is something that you will have to, you know, bear through. Then maybe about 8 hours of sleep, 6 to 8 hours. 6 to 8 hours of sleep is important. Don't spoil your sleep cycle. It is That will help you maintain throughout the 6 months course. Maintain your health. Maintain your, you know, thought process in the right way. Don't have, you know, if you're a person who sleeps a little more, if you're a person who stays up in the night and sleeps in the morning, it's okay. If you're sleeping at uh, 1 o'clock, don't expect to wake up at 4 o'clock and start studying. It's fine if you can stretch it at 8 o'clock and stuff. But if you're sleeping earlier, see that you wake up early and, you know, have a proper sleep cycle, at least 6 to 8 hours. I mean, don't go minimum than that. Don't go less than 6 hours. It will disturb you. It will disturb your health. It will disturb the way you think. It will disturb the way you execute things. So it's important that at least 6 to 8 hours you're there. And about two hours you can put for your all your daily activities, you know, so all your stuff that you do for your daily activities, food and, you know, buying some groceries and all that stuff. So if you balance out, so around 10 hours here, 14 hours here, so that will be your 24 hours for the next six months. This is the schedule that you're going to follow and see, you keep, you try to touch closer to that. It is very, you know, we are, not, we are all human beings, not always possible. Some days will be really good, some days you may not be able to do that, but still okay. Don't let, you know, a small phase in the day spoil your entire day. Just stay committed to the course and you'll keep willing. Sometimes you'll be able to do achieve that well. Sometimes you may fall short of few hours. It's okay. Don't be rigid. Be kind to yourself. Be positive about it. Have a positive pressure only. No negative thinking. All of you are going to pass. Keep that thought process and give, keep moving ahead. Okay. And even the results also, it does not matter. If you don't do well in one or two days, it doesn't matter. But overall, your average should be good. Your average time that you spend. Some days will be really good. Some days will be really bad. But you know, your average line should be above the baseline that you need it optimum to clear the exam. So don't see that you, you we all will have, you're all humans have bad days in between. But that bad phase should be smaller. That bad time should be smaller where you're not studying or where you're distracted. And your productive time should be more. And when you see average should be okay, good. So it doesn't, don't have to be really worried and upset about some small patches in between where you're not done well, where you're not well for the preparation or you're not doing good at that time. It's okay. We are all human beings. We go through that phases. But see that the average is, you know, on the optimum. Then... Now, let me explain you what we do at Arise and stuff. There are different batches. We have a regular online batch. Again, an intense preparation, right? This is all, and you know, you should talk to your seniors who have attended the classes, right? Before you take any suggestions and stuff of different places also. And before have a clear idea how it happens, what it does, what are the teachers who come down, right? So look at the notes that they are provided and stuff. And then, then you have a informed decisions on to that. So there is an online batch, the regular batch that we do, an offline batch where people actually come down the faculties are traveling we are going to do both the batches full fledged till the december exam there is online foundation batches right and offline vacation batches for students who are free and who wants to attend just the offline classes in the vacation like people used to come down for one month two months you will always have those vacation batches where you can come down clinical practice and observership this is only for you know exam going not for exam going students this is for any you know third year students second year students who want to come and get hands on experience with the hospital that via LinkedIn that can also be provided. So what is the plan? Basically, you know, the classroom faculty based live classroom classes or online classes, they remain the same, you will have the similar schedule for both online and offline. So here you will have completion of the subject in detail, four or five days according to the subject uh, duration, 
the subject will be completed in detail after a six to eight hour classes by the faculties then they are followed by a one day off where you get a preparatory off to study the entire thing that you have learned over the four to five days then they'll be having a subject wise test for example you have started with uh, maybe uh, suppose you have done pathology you have done pathology for five days then you're given a break in between then you revise the, uh, for in that break and then attend the exam next day so it is followed by a subject wise test this is a training program that happens then you'll have monthly grant test in a month if you have covered about four to five subjects towards the end of the month you'll be made to you know go through a grant test just to allow for a spaced repetition that you have and then you have all the 19 subjects that will be covered by our target is to finish by around first week of november or max to max okay it should extend and we should be able to complete all the 19 subjects by second week of november after this is done that means all 19 subjects full detailed uh, faculty training is done you have written subject wise exam after that you are doing subject wise after the subject wise exam next subject will start and then again the same thing with the subject wise exam so you are till the mid november we are completing all the 19 after that we are going for in november we are going for 19 subjects test and discussions so you are not attending classes you are revising in november and only coming for about three hours time where you write the exam 100 questions of each subject and the faculty discussion happens and then you have some grand test in between to keep you you know have a orientation towards your exam the grand test will slightly be on the difficult line but to allow you to think to allow you to extrapolate the information that you have learned from all this uh, you know classes all these tests the grand test will be slightly on the difficult level but use it as a learning tool all this test that you do the subject wise test the test and discussions the grand test i've seen many students getting you know really depressed after the results and stuff it doesn't it doesn't work like that you have to think more smartly this is not judging yourself this is to learn okay use it as a learning tool not a judging tool don't judge yourself judging will happen on the day of exam so use everything that happens during this process as a learning tool you learn you learn something new adapt it absorb it okay so that you have lesser mistakes to do towards your end and uh, then towards december when you are having the first week or second week of december when you are having an exam the faculty will come and will do a fast track review where they complete the all the high yield areas in within a short duration of three to four hours and that will be the whole thing so basically the regular schedule is three parts you have your 19 subjects covered in detail then you have your test and discussion then you have your fast track revision so this actually forms the course the complete course and all of this is faculty driven the, the faculty and the shit organization will actually help you complete the syllabus on time these are our classrooms uh, at hyderabad that you have like you know this is the students that we have this was pre-covid times so our good days that time and hopefully you know things will come back to normal as soon as possible the energy levels the are, are completely different and you'll you'll enjoy the process also and these are classes in kerala right so in kanur also the similar fashion and uh, very intense preparation was even during this time we actually conducted uh, classes also once the government regulations were relaxed but uh, the classes went on probably for two and a half months and stuff we completed a lot of subjects in that time few subjects had to be shifted online but you know the syllabus was done for both people online as well as for offline people these are the online classes that we have similar you will have you know many of the classes conducted on zoom itself so that you are comfortable on your laptops and on your mobile phones and uh, some classes also are done on the arise application also and you'll be given the pdf the images so you can stay on track based upon how you are so if you're feeling comfortable for online classes you can join online if you're feeling comfortable for offline you can do that offline also so there are some you will have the mcqs provided and all the required things the basic things that are required all of them image based questions okay online exams everything will be there and these are the libraries one of the important benefits that we'll have for you know offline classes is the use of reading rooms and libraries where students actually sit through and these are 24 7 okay so throughout the thing there'll be an office staff available for you to you know have and the access is completely 24 by 7 because different students have different timelines so we kept it for 24 by 7 and these are the hostel facilities we provide so basically you know at arise it is not about our auditorium we don't believe in just calling you to the auditorium and sending you from the auditorium it's an ecosystem that you come in you come in right from your documentation part your hall tickets the entire process of filling applications their printout of hall tickets everything will be taken care of. the whole staff will see that you are in a comfortable zone your hostels will be provided your library will be provided 24 by 7 so it's it's completely a uh, ecosystem that you come and adapt to and uh, clinical practice for your juniors and third year fourth year students who feel that there is some lack lacking of clinical information that i would not for exam going students post in post exam you have internship you learn a lot there i would not suggest this for your exam going students now 
so these are our uh, centers so you can note down these numbers if you're interested especially for your december batches so you can come down and uh, interact with us we'll be there personally to guide you through this process so before we conclude uh, we'll discuss uh, all your queries also so that i can understand what all queries you have so i'll be happy to take up your queries uh, uh so please let me know what all things you have so that i can respond it to you now uh, anything any queries do you have from your side about the preparation strategy subjects to do anything from your side you please let me know handwritten notes is better ha having a handwritten notes uh, will help you be active in the classes also you can if not if you are comfortable with pdfs please underline it highlight it as the class is going on so it depends on your comfort level but don't be passive don't be passively listening on the bed and stuff i would suggest even if you are in the classroom don't just carry previous notes and sit in the classroom always actively underline star mark right or write down if you are a first fresh student when you are in the time of concept building write down with your own hands if you are you know attempting it for the second third time you are listening to the subject you already have your handwritten notes you already have your existing pdfs you can also you save time but at the same time you have to see that you are actively you know marking out during the class and underlining it and uh, do you provide study material in printed notes yes you uh, in an offline sessions we'll be providing it in online it will be mostly transferred in the telegram groups and the whatsapp groups so the notes will be provided in the offline centers you'll have printouts of the question papers print outs of the class notes and stuff 